Hey guys, how you doing? Ray here again. If you'd like to subscribe, it's Nitro Kyosho. Remember to also follow me on Facebook. Uh, type in Nitro Kyosho, uh, all one word, and you will come to the RC community page. Well guys, I uh, always get asked a lot of questions. People know what I have. They see all the videos. And they ask me to do these kind of videos for them. And I always try to oblige my subscribers. Uh, I hate doing... Uh, like a versus type video, but they always seem to end up that way. <laughs> so, anyways, let's get started. Question was, okay, you got a Dominator Ray, now you got a Goblin 380. Let's talk. Let's find out the facts, the differences, different things about them. Builds, durability, ease of maintenance, parts, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, so let's get started guys um, Price wise uh, The Dominator is cheaper to build. Okay, a line gives you everything with the kit uh, Anybody who builds a, a sob goblin <laughs> knows you don't get any electronics or any of that kind of stuff with the kit uh, so uh, Now a lot of people will say the Align electronics are cheap uh, that they're garbage uh, and they give you low-line stuff, and that's why, I mean, if you got the high, high-quality stuff, the kit would be double the price. Uh, and then the, on the, the Saab side here, uh, you don't get anything, and then the price of the kit was fairly affordable, but then when you put all the electronics in the build, it really racks up the price. Uh, so... I've had quite a few Align helicopters, guys. They don't come, in my opinion, with garbage electronics. A lot of people say that. I know a lot of people had issues with the 3GX uh, and so on. Uh, I've never run a 3GX, so I, I never had any experiences with them. Uh, but, I mean, they give you the, the stuff to get you going. And it works, as far as I can tell, the electronics work fairly well, guys. The speed controls, motors got a lot of power now with the new Dominator series, uh, and so forth. Um, so for somebody starting out, it's really not a bad deal to get everything you need, and you don't have to go pick your motor, and you don't have to... It takes all the guesswork out of it for you, <clears throat> and they really do fly pretty good with what they give you. Like I said, the motors have gotten a lot better. Uh... And as you would get better anyways, if you want to upgrade things, you can. You know, speed controls or motors, whatever have you. Uh, so, on to the Goblin side. Uh, <clears throat> be aware, guys, if you're going to build one of these, uh, $400 for the kit, but the rest of the components is going to drive it up to around $1,200 for a total, and that's not including batteries. Uh, so, be aware of that before you, you uh, come out to... Uh, uh, you know, buy one of these. Um, as far as the builds, I build both of them, obviously. <clears throat> uh, the T-Rex has a lot more parts, uh, guys. Um, you know, you have the struts, and you have uh, uh, the uh, horizontal fin and the clamps and everything. You have a lot more parts, screws, washers. Uh, the Goblin is definitely a simpler helicopter to put together and uh, the way everything is on it, it makes it very, very quick uh, to fix. My friend had crashed a 500 and I had rebuilt it for him and the thing was annihilated beyond recognition. And uh, I put it all back together, taking my time in about, I think, about an hour and 40 minutes, something like that. Okay, so uh, that's, you know... The ease of maintenance on the Goblin, I think the Goblins are uh, really good in that uh, respect, guys. Um, as far as dur durability issues, and I'm starting to laugh when I say that, you do not want to put one of these into the ground, guys. I've seen these go into the ground, and it's not pretty. Okay, as far as durability issues, they shatter like a uh, piece of glass. Okay, um... On the Align end, Align helicopters are very, very durable, very, very tough. 
uh, they can withstand one heck of a beating. Okay, uh, I think so. As far as durability issues, it's got to go on to this guy. As far as maintenance and ease of build, it's got to go on to this guy. Um, a lot of people like the goblins. I mean, they look beautiful. Okay, so they do have a very nice uh, look to them. Uh, on the Align side, they've started to put the speed fuselages out. Uh, and that's more or less a blatant, in my opinion, a blatant, uh, you know, attempt to try to look like these. I had one on here. I didn't like it, guys. It looked nice, and it made it very visible, but it made it handle really weird. And I'm a guy that will go out in 25, 30 mile an hour winds with this thing, and I was scared to go out with that fuselage because it was blowing it all over the place. It wasn't designed with that in mind when they made the helicopter, so... Uh, as far as the layouts of different things, uh, a line really made this simple as far as the servo layout uh, to access servos, uh, the same with the Goblin. I think that the servos on the Align helicopter are a lot, they're put into the aluminum blocks. It's a lot tougher, a lot stiffer setup. Uh, the Align gives you plastic uh, servo mounts and they're coming out with their upgrade aluminum ones that should have came with the kit to begin with. <laughs> uh, but those have a lot of flex. You can actually move the servos with those plastic uh, uh, mounts on there. Uh, this is a little bit different. I'm going to do a video on this compared to the 500 Goblin and on up because there is a lot of changes between this one and the 500 and the other models. Uh, now, price-wise, okay, uh, they did make this kind of more affordable, guys, but some of the parts are geared towards 450 prices, and some are kind of geared towards like a T-Rex 500 price. Uh, the canopy is around 40 plus dollars, 44 I think they were going for. Uh, these are around anywhere from, depending what company, Fusano, uh, Line, it can be anywhere from... 25 to 40 dollars too so uh, this is belt driven guys so you don't have all the torque tubes and the stripping and the chipping and all that kind of stuff which makes life a lot easier uh, a line always had the issues where if you have a tail striker the littlest thing can chip the, the torque tube uh, if I had my choice which one I'd want to work on it would definitely be the goblin uh, you know, I've come home with these and they had a crash or a bent main shaft and then the screw gets stripped out inside of the uh, the main gear because it just gets bent in a crash and it ends up taking you two, two hours, three hours to get to drill it out, to chop it out, to get it out, whatever. So it's kind of a little bit of a pain in the butt sometimes with these, uh, opposed to these a lot easier. Um, they really made the front torque tube box on this guy's uh, kind of a pain in the butt to work on when you got to change some gears. You really got to pop off the mount holding your uh, <clears throat> fly bar unit. You got to take out the uh, elevator guide here. I mean, you got to take out the, all the screws in the back to get to pull that out. It really made it, makes it a pain in the butt. Uh, uh, the skid designs. I would got to give that to the Align helicopter. The skids are much stronger, tougher. I, uh, you know, you drop a goblin from a foot off the ground, you break the skids. <laughs> you know, so that's one thing they really should improve on, is the skid design. Um, I know they want the breakaway to save that kind of stuff, uh, other damage, but I buried Align helicopters into the ground, destroyed. You know, and the skids break off just the same and. Doesn't do any frame damage, never damaged in a line uh, frame. Uh, the blades on this guys are 380. These are uh, 360 or I'm running 350 Zeal blades right now. Uh, the swash plate on this, they've actually improved on my idea of putting the three screws underneath to hold the bearing from pulling out. I've had bearings pull out on both helicopter brands. Uh, and that can cost you some money, a uh, new swash plate. 
Uh, the batteries on this guy's, you can put a bigger battery. They're saying anywhere from 15 to 2600. This one runs a 1300, and that's about all you can get in there. Uh, uh, what else can we talk about? Uh, a little bit bulkier head design, blade grips. Uh, head block housing is beefier. Uh, they've moved away from the DFC design like this, so you've got a little bit more components, the, like the uh, different arms in there to wash out, or whatever you want to call them, type arms. Uh, what else can we talk about? Um, these are running more powerful for the most part. I mean, I've got a Castle 90 on there, a uh, bigger motor. It's going to be a, a, it's actually kind of a cross between uh, more or less a 450 size and a 500, I would say, this thing, you know, in be, more in between than this one is. Uh, the frame design, uh, you know, similar in, in that respect, about the same thickness of the frames and everything. Uh, canopy ease, putting on and off, uh, very easy. Now they're making these a lot more flexible. Cano mod, they go on really easy, as easy as these now. These have the locks uh, to keep the canopy locked on. These don't. You can get aftermarket ones from like our Buya. Um, size difference. Uh, you can see the Goblin is uh, a little bit bigger here. We'll actually put these next to each other. About nose to nose. And... Let me get the ruler out, guys, for you here, and we'll see what we got here for size. Uh, let's put it this way. Okay, so about nose to nose, guys, here, you're looking at about 27 inches on the uh, Dominator, and if you're going... Well, if, actually, if you're going to the end of the tail fin, you're looking at about, let's say, 27 and a half. The Goblin, to the end of the tail fin, probably looks like it pushes it out to about 31. Okay. So there's a little bit of difference there, guys. Uh, you know, depending how you, you know, want to do it. If you're going right to the end, nose to tail fin. Uh, you're looking at about uh, 27 to 31, you know, quite a few difference in inches there. Uh, as far as the, the overall size, comparison looking wise, I'll put this one here. Put the Dominator in front of it. Try to get them about nose to nose. Okay. And let me get that off the pod for you guys. Like I said, the parts for the Goblin 380 for this model are a lot more affordable. Okay. So there you go. And see, it's a, you know, difference in size back there. Now I've got that boom cover I put on for more visibility. The Goblin is definitely more visible. All right. To see in the air, it's going to be more of a pleasure to fly. Uh, it's definitely thicker. Okay. And I'll try to give you a rundown here. And you can see this difference there. Okay. So. That's pretty much it in a nutshell, guys. Like I said, uh, ease of maintenance and that kind of stuff, I got to give it to the, uh, the Goblin. Uh, a lot less parts, a lot easier to build, a lot easier to work on. Okay. Uh, bigger bearings, obviously, in the tail. Uh, and... Uh, just, I mean, basically a different setup. The whole transmission design is, is different. The pulley systems and, uh, and that kind of stuff, guys. Uh, I like both machines. 
I have both of them. Uh, so, uh, I think more or less, guys, it would come down to uh, money. If I had the money, if you have the money, uh, and I had the choice to build either, I would go with the Goblin 380. Uh, I don't recommend Goblins for novice, beginner, flyers, guys, because you really don't want to crash them. As far as durability, uh, I give that to the T-Rex uh, and the Align brand. Uh, so, as far as being a, a novice or a beginner or whatever you want to call it, a newbie, I would stay away from, uh, you know, something like a Goblin, not because it's a bad brand, but because uh, you obviously don't want to, uh, you know, be crashing them. So, uh, but uh, if I had my choice, I'd go with the Goblin, uh, definitely, uh, over the Dominator, but... That's your choice. It comes down to money and a lot of other things, guys. So uh, that's just some of the things about them, some general information. Uh, if you got any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Send me uh, any messages you need and uh, call it a video. Thanks for watching.